Good morning everyone and welcome to our backyard. In today's video I am going to go through some of the new things that I did in my yard this year and we're going to take a look at them and see how they are doing. Because we have such a long growing season here most of these things I started in March or April so it has been a good two to three months of growing for what I am going to show you. My name is Crystal and I garden in zone 9b along the Texas Gulf Coast south of Houston and we have heavy clay soil and typically quite a bit of rain. One unique thing for us is we always have high humidity which is not a lot of plants, some plants do very well in it, but some traditional plants that you would think would do well in humidity sometimes don't. So anyway, let's get on to the first plants. So one of the things that I did differently this year is I planted bulbs. I got bulbs from Costco early this spring. I got caladium bulbs and then canna bulbs and I thought, let's try it. So for the caladium bulbs, I had five different bulbs that I planted and let's see how they're doing. I'm actually very happy with how these bulbs are doing. I planted them along my, the corner of my east fence and one of the things that I did last year is I had, if you can see, I had cardinal climber that I've that I grow along my fence. And let me get closer. We have fishing lines strung up on the fence, and the cardinal climber, as you can see, past a vine. Cardinal climber grows up readily, and I really really like it. The issue with the east fence in the corner here, so this is the northeast corner, is it doesn't get as much sun as the cardinal climber needs. And so it didn't do as well here. And so I thought, I'm going to do something differently. And so I planted the caladium bulbs here. Let me get closer to each one. I think the caladiums are doing well. I like how it looks. They're huge. These leaves are gorgeous. And almost all of them are thriving. I think the only one that doesn't really like its life here is this one. This one isn't quite as happy. That's called Red Flash and it might just get a little bit too much sun because it does get some pretty intense sun for a couple of hours and I think that one is the one that's suffering the most but the rest really like their life. So interestingly in this northeast corner we're kind of training the cardinal climber to come over the top. And so if I plant caladium bulbs here again, I think I'm still going to want to have cardinal climber on the fence. And that's the piece that I do miss, this vertical interest up here. Even though it wasn't as lush as over here, and it, and in August, oh my gosh, this is just bushy and gorgeous. It's already starting to get there. But even so, I miss what was over here. All right, let me go show you the next caladium. Sorry, the next set of bulbs. So the success is, is all the bulbs that I planted have come up. And so these are the cannas. I'm going to show you the, the bag they came in. So from Longfield Gardens, the canna bulbs all came up. 
they are in full sun but my blooms don't look like these blooms my blooms are little and let's see if I can focus in here and they do open but they're not large so this could be something that I'm doing I planted these in the ground I do come out and deadhead and get the blooms off but maybe I should be removing this bloom stalk also this is the first year I've had candas and I'm not really sure if I'm pulling these off correctly I can see it seems like I'm getting some pretty good <laughs> seeds going here so I'm probably not deadheading properly but these cannas look pretty good the foliage anyway not too happy with the blooms and I planted this poor canna in my container that used to have my red mandevilla and this thing is getting eaten up by leaf roller caterpillars or once they grow into butterflies those are the Brazilian skippers they're not a very pretty butterfly oh, there's an active leaf roller right here but this canna is valiantly trying to do its thing but it's definitely munching material for that caterpillar I don't have it in full sun I've mentioned in the past it was full sun but now my tree provides a little bit of shade in the afternoon and so those cannas pretty much have full sun and they're doing much better all right next set I have removed all of my tropical milkweed and I used to have tropical milkweed along through here and I would cut it down and so I wouldn't have the issue with having it over winter meaning be active in the winter and I've replaced it with something else it's hard to get for me to purchase native milkweed down here because it's always gone and this was an interesting milkweed this is native to Arizona and I thought hmm do I try it or do I not and so I decided to bring this in this was at my favorite nursery and I thought let me try this and so I've already seen a monarch caterpillar on it it's not getting as large and bushy The blooms remind me of my aquatic milkweed. And the leaf structure somewhat too, because they're not, the leaves are not very big. They're th thin and narrow. So we will see, we will see how this does. But next to it, I am so pleased because I had three of my giant milkweed that I could not save in the freeze and this was an experiment they were way too large and tall and they were out in the elements and we froze this past year my sensors my outdoor sensor got down to 19.2 degrees didn't last long and it was only for a couple of days but my plant this plant froze because it is not a plant that is um, hardy if you will in freezing conditions it is a tropical and subtropical plant and the reason I like it is for these large luscious leaves for the monarch caterpillars and I've had really good success with ha hosting monarchs on this plant beautifully they came up from the roots i absolutely love this let me show you the other two plants on the south side these were still in their nursery containers and rooted in the ground and look at this 
these have come up magnificently so I am so pleased that probably means I can have my giants come back from the roots this was a great it was a forced experiment but I absolutely love the results I am so happy with this If you saw on my channel in April, I put in a new raised garden bed this year. It, and I put this in in April. It somewhat matches, at least the brick matches, my tree bed, what I call my tree bed. And I've got some new plants in here that I have put in and I really like the look of this bed so let me show you those plants right in front I have Cheyenne spirit coneflower which is doing well and my Stokes aster is finishing up it looks like on its bloom here I need to come out and probably remove these blooms I love this plant and I only purchased two and now I wish I had planted more I've mentioned it is a native plant to Texas and other parts in the United States and it just has a beautiful interesting flower it this one stays pretty compact so that's a good it's been a beautiful flowerer and I'm curious if I'll get if it will flush out with blooms a little bit later my guess is is it will and on the corner here I have a yarrow and I have not planted yarrow in the yard before the foliage is extremely interesting to me I love the texture I like the you will the cross lattice work that that it it does and on the same plant depending on the age of the flowers when they first come out this one has a gorgeous scarlet color and then it fades to more of a mauvey color and then it fades down to almost a white I would like to have seen it flower a little bit more it is in full sun it's growing gorgeously this is the one plant that the fire ants took residence in and I had to remove them using diatomaceous earth but it is growing really really nicely the native liatris is growing and bloomed beautifully it's a it finished its bloom cycle and I cut them back I'm hoping I might get another set of blooms but we'll see the one thing that I have to say has been a huge hit in the in this garden bed is the dwarf porterweed and I have shared with you on many of my videos that down here, porterweed is an absolute nectar favorite with both hummingbirds and butterflies. In fact, this is probably number two with the butterflies. This is a dwarf variety. And the reason I'm, reason I'm showing you this variety is because I've never planted a dwarf before. It's supposed to get one to two feet tall and it is definitely that and I host butterflies on this all throughout the day it's it's been fantastic it's over two feet though so it's gonna be interesting to see how large that grows and I'm not gonna go through all the salvias that I have because I do have some new ones but right next to it is hot lips and as you know, I wanted hot lips for a long, long time. It reminds me of the maraschino bush salvia that I have, and I do like it. 
I don't know if I would have planted it here because I think it will somewhat go a little bit dormant in the heat of the summer. My maraschino does that also. And I don't necessarily want that prominently here. So good, good learnings for me because I want to be able to plant things that are visible and that do very, very well because I see this garden bed, I see this all the time and I'm looking out my window a lot during the day and see this garden bed. So probably what I'm going to do, at least my thinking right now, is I might be sprinkling some seeds I might be trying some Agastache or Agastache seeds. I did get them this year and I haven't planted them. And then of course I have Zinnia seeds that I might be peppering in through here. We'll see, haven't decided yet. Okay, next plant. My little Joe pie weed I had in a container for three years, I think. And it did okay, it stayed very small it bloomed and then it would go dormant and it would come back every year in the container. So I transplanted it and I absolutely love what it looks like and it loves its life here. This is also a fall hummingbird favorite. Oh, I've got a butterflies in the, <laughs> are just starting to come out. And you can see they love porterweed. But my little Joe pie weed, I'm really glad that I pulled it out of its container and planted it. It's doing so much better. It's flourishing in its new spot. So here in this spot, I have a native Henry Duelberg Salvi, Salvia farinacea. And it is holding its own, but it is right next to Mystic Spires. And Mystic Spires is a hybrid of Salvia farinacea and Longispatia, I think is how you, Aspatica, how you pronounce it. And the blooms are similar, but Mystic Spires is an absolute winner in the garden. And I do like Henry Duelberg. I do like the fact that it is a native. It is holding its own. So I won't be removing it or moving it, but it is not quite as vigorous as what's right next to it is Mystic Spires. Still pretty happy with Henry Duelberg. You've heard me talk about this ground cover in the past, <clears throat> in past videos. And the thing that's new to me this year is this ground cover can be a little bit challenging for me to find. I can only get it at certain times of the year. It is the white veined Dutchman's pipe vine. And it is the host plant to the gorgeous black and iridescent blue pipe vine swallowtail butterfly. And here's what those caterpillars look like. I love having this in the yard because I have so many pipe vine swallowtail caterpillars and butterflies. What's unique is I purchased seven containers last year, larger containers, and I was gonna plant them in another spot and instead Instead, I decided to plant everything here. So my goal was to have all of this where you even see ground. It was to have this completely covered with this ground cover. And it would if the caterpillars and the butterflies didn't lay eggs because believe it or not, this has been, this is its third time coming back completely from nothing. About a month ago, three weeks or so ago, this was eaten down again for the second time to the absolute ground and they ate the stems. And so it's such a wonderful plant because it grows so quickly and it comes back so beautifully. 
But what I've learned is I need to plant large stands together of host plants. My observation is the female butterflies will then come and of course lay eggs. And it's a numbers game with caterpillars. You have to have a lot for them to survive into adulthood and to adult butterflies. And so I'm so pleased that I decided to put them all together instead of at the other end of my shade bed here. And so that's a learning for me. I knew that with milkweed and the monarchs. Research has shown a monarch butterfly female will be more apt to stop and lay eggs if you have at least five milkweed plants for her to do so. And so that has been an always stuck in my mind as I need to have large stands of the host plant and not just one. And let me show you over on the fennel, same thing. Although the fennel isn't new for me because I have this huge patch of fennel, I have tons of caterpillars. This is the whole, this is the third set of caterpillars that are out in the garden, like out in the wild. And last year, they were just eaten and did not make it to adulthood. But this is the third stand. It's just amazing to me. Now I'm wondering, I've seen less wasps in the yard. I'm wondering, because I took out all my tropical milkweed, I'm wondering if I have less predation due to that, or is it just because it's just a different year? I don't know, but it's certainly an observation that I have made this year. My fennel stand hasn't changed. It's very large. I have so many fennel plants. It's all along here, just bushy with fennel. And I've had more Eastern black swallowtails this year than I've ever had in the four years now, the four summers that I have been raising and, and really growing specifically for butterflies, hummingbirds, pollinators, and birds. So that's a definitely a very interesting observation for me. Well, thank you for joining me today. I did have a few new things this year. <laughs> See my little Cheyenne Spirit coneflower there. I transplanted that there because there was a hole and that's the only coneflower that I had. I will replace that with a powwow wild berry next year. <laughs> ah, such a thing that gardeners will do. Yes, or I should say that this gardener will do. I just love plants. Well, thanks for joining me today. I really hope you all have a wonderful day. And I hope to see you again soon.